home tonight is the giraffe. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Shia LaBeouf. I stole it from Nicole, but I stand by it. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yes. And I am sticking with Dale Earnhardt Jr. I'm Seth Green when I saw that green apple. I think it's Travis Barker. I really hope so. I think it's uh, Jason Priestley. All right, that's a good guess. Take it! The Masked Singer playoffs are on, and an unexpected actor was revealed as the giraffe. But in this week's episode, me and Kyle discuss our favorite performances, the format that has some viewers confused, and Kyle exposes one of the most requested characters, or should I say two of the most requested characters, the Snow Owl. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Mel. And I'm Kyle. And welcome to the Talent Recap Show, you guys. All right, it was yet another week on The Masked Singer. Kyle, yet another character was revealed. And I'll let you tell everybody who was revealed in this week's episode. It was the giraffe who was revealed to be Brian Austin Green. Yes, you guys, Brian Austin Green. Now, if you're not familiar of him, like I kind of was it, I'm going to be honest. He's an actor <laughs> from back in the day. He's worked with Robin Thicke before in the past. And I recently found out he's Megan Fox's husband, and she's a hottie, and I just know Megan Fox. So she did, <laughs> she did good there. He did good there. <laughs> How do you feel about this week's reveal? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was super fun. I mean, again, it's always kind of awesome to see when the panelists had no idea it was someone that they actually know and so i think that was a really fun twist on this week too definitely speaking of fun twists can we talk about that intro with um joe McHale being robin thick as, as the mask and coming in as this week's surprise guest i love that <laughs> Yeah, I love that too. I just started watching Community, uh -huh. so I love Joel McHale, and I think these little shticks and things that they do are a fun way to kind of switch it up, especially when we're seeing a lot of the same stuff every week with just like clues, performance, clues, performance, mm -hmm. and so I think it's, it's fun to get some comedic relief in there, uh, and especially with Joel McHale. And honestly, we also know that it is to fit in some time because there were actually only four performances in this week's episode. So you needed, they needed to throw in a little skit to buy some time, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So, Kyle, let's get into this week's performances. Now, usually we do a top three. But since there were only four and one got eliminated, we're actually going to break it down to our top two. But me and Kyle's favorites. Kyle, I'll let you go first. All right, my favorite performance this week was Popcorn Singing Falling by Harry Styles. Listen, I love me some popcorn, Kaya. I am digging this performance, too. What, what are your thoughts on it? Oh, yeah, I mean, Fallen is a great, great song just to start. I love that. And so she kind of put her own twist on it, and I loved hearing it in her voice. I thought she made it her own and definitely proved that she is a contender in this. I mean... I don't know if she's my favorite in all of Group A, but I think this week she had the strongest performance. Definitely agree with you. Now, everyone, if you didn't pay attention to our previous episode, Kyle actually exposed who she is. Now, I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to spoil it, but if you want to check it out, check, take a look at the video up above here, and Kyle will expose who she is. All right. And all that being said, even with us exposing it last week, we have a lot of different guesses for who she is this week that we saw in our video and that we've seen across the different social platforms. So a lot of people seem to think that it is one of these three people, either Tina Turner, Taylor Dane, or Darlene Love. So that narrows down the field for you. If you want to see who we think it is, watch our video from last week. I think I got a feeling that's one of your picks. But hey, we're going to go into my favorite performance of the week, you guys. And it was none other than the sun singing Kesha's Praying. I love the sun. I'm telling you, anybody who has a gold sparkly costume is the it girl of the season. <laughs> Yeah, that's very true, and she has the voice to boot. I mean, we saw her first performance singing Lizzo, and now she goes singing Kesha. I mean, she can clearly crush these not easy songs to sing, and so I think, you know, she's someone that we'll see stick around for a while. She's giving us vocal. She's giving us, this is not a joke to her. She is definitely <laughs> a singer, and 
another person that you have also exposed. So you guys, make sure you take a look at the video above right here so you can see who Kyle exposed the sun as. Now, this yeah. was, this week's performances were cool, but you know, Kyle, I'm really feeling like there's like an older audience, uh, older, I should say, contestants on the show right now, and specifically in this group. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think that's true. I think, you know, it's interesting on the show because a lot of times you, it is probably mostly older people watching this show, so they want to cast it so that it's people that older people are going to know who it is. You know, I don't think a lot of young people would particularly know who Brian Austin Green is. Uh, and so I think that is a great, you know, indication of that. And some of the other people that we're predicting are also some people who were more popular, you know, a decade or two ago. Yeah, I like that you said that because I really like how the show is giving us that diversity because I don't know who he is, but hey, my mama does. So it works out, right? We can watch <laughs> exactly. the show together. But Kyle, it is time for us to go into our favorite segment where you, yes you Kyle, are our mass Singer Detective and you expose one of the characters this week. Let us know, who do you plan on exposing? Well, this was a very highly requested mm -hmm. reveal and so we're just gonna do it. So this week we are exposing the snow owl. The snow owls. Okay, you guys, you've been in the comments for the past uh, past couple of recap episodes telling us how much you want to know who the snow owls are. There's been a bunch of guesses. Listen, I kind of, I'm not going to lie, I'm leaning a little bit towards Julianne Huff and her brother, but I'm probably wrong and I'm not the de detective of the show. So Kyle, <laughs> I'll let you let us know. Who are the snow owls? All right, so unfortunately the Snow Owls are not the Huffs uh, from what we see, but they are Clint Black and Lisa Hartman Black. You know what, Kyle? I'm going to be honest. I did not expect that, but let me know why the Snow Owls are them. Let's get into it. Yeah, and so it's interesting because, you know, we were kind of pulling all of our clues together, and one of the mm. things is Clint has a very strong country accent when he usually sings, and in the first performance, he must have been masking it because this time around, you could hear it a little bit more when they sang, uh, like, I'm going to lose you. And so that was kind of the nail in the coffin, and it also helped us gather some more clues for this. So the first clue is that they're a married couple. I mean, in all of this, it has to be someone who's connected. They've talked about a family reunion and all these things. So they, ha they have to be related somehow, uh, and that's that connection. Also in the first clue package, um, we saw a clam with a pearl inside of it, and their daughter's name is Lily Pearl. So that middle name is the connection there. Uh, they also told this story, and it showed them driving up, up Coral Canyon. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they lived in Los Angeles, they lived on Laurel Canyon. And so I think that's a clear nod there. Uh, and then they also talked about Christmas, and uh, Clint, Black, Clint Black has released Christmas albums and talked about him being a jokester as well. And uh, he's well known to pull pranks and just kind of be a goofy guy. I mean, a lot of interviews about their marriage, they talk about how laughing like keeps their love alive. <laughs> and so I think that's a good connection too. Um, this week, we also heard uh, him talk about going through a messy breakup, and he went through a legal battle with his manager around the same time that he married his wife Lisa and so I think that is that connection there but they're trying to get us yep. because they keep giving clues that make you think like they're that they're not married things like that things like mentioning saying oh brother um, but I think these are all just trying to detract us from what the truth is here <laughs> honestly Kyle they keep on saying it and that's why I keep on thinking Julianne huh, huh? no okay. <laughs> exactly and then, so we also saw an anchor that said management on it and uh, you know, if you put that together, anchor management sounds like anger management, and that's a show, uh, or sorry, a movie that um, Clint was in at one point. We also saw a basketball with DAL written on it, which is, the assumption there is Dallas, and he was in a movie called Maverick, and so Dallas Mavericks, that connection there. And we also saw a black hat, which um, you know you can either connect to the fact that Clint frequently wears a black cowboy hat or the fact that uh, Lisa Hartman Black was on a, like a, a redoing of Bewitched. She played a character when that like came back for a revival. And so all of those are clues that connect to them. And also I think just the voices sound exactly like them. I mean, they've recorded a few songs together before, the harmonies are on point, and I just think it all just makes sense. Listen, Kyle, 
I don't know what your major was in college, but it definitely should have been criminal justice, like investigation, <laughs> whatever you do. Cause you, like, I can't even, I can't even go against that. It sounds like you hit every clue. Guys, let us know in the comments if you agree with Kyle. I mean, I thought it was Julianne Huff and her brother and clearly I was wrong. So Kyle always gets it right. If you think that Kyle is wrong, let us know in the comments below and let us know why. And if you agree with him and think that he missed any clues, also let us know down below. Yeah, I'm always looking for more clues. So if there's anything that I missed, comment below. Speaking of comments, you guys, I think it's time for us to get into our comment of the week. So every week we choose one of your comments from a previous video and shout you guys out, love and or hate, because we love you guys. And this week's comment comes from Julie Black who says, I love The Masked Singer and have been an avid viewer. I just wish there was a way they can incorporate the format from the first season, I think she's trying to say, into later seasons. Being able to watch the contestants face off against each other was amazing. Thank you, Julie Black, for watching the show. Not just the show, but the talent recap show as well and <laughs> rocking with us. And yes, you're right. You're an avid viewer because in seasons one format was way different than the format that we're dealing with right now. Kyle, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it really was. It's hard to keep track of, of how it's all working now. But, you know, we've kind of jumped around from A to B back to A. Mm -hmm. Then next week we go back to playoffs for group B. And then we have a week off because of the World Series, maybe two weeks off because of the World Series, depending on how many games it goes through. And then we'll finally get to meet Group C. And so it just seems like, yeah, I mean, last season we saw Group A for a few weeks, then Group B, and, and so on. And this week we're just jumping all around. So it's really hard to follow. But I agree. I loved when they kind of went head to head. You know, we got to see these different masked singers compete. And it, it felt more like a competition at that point. I was then just going to say that. This One, this season is a whole bunch of entanglement. I lean on <laughs> Kyle to let me know what group is performing because I'm kind of lost when it comes to that, you guys. So let me know <laughs> in the comments if you're like me, a little confused as to why they're doing that. But I guess it's to keep us on our toes a little bit since they're taking away the, the competition. I should say a lot of the competition aspect. I totally agree with Julie as well. I, I like when they were going head to head. It kind of made me go, ooh, I want this person to win. I want that person to win. And yeah. it gave that energy every episode. You know what I mean? So it is yeah, different. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure part of that is because they don't have an audience there to vote. Yeah. And so it's, it's harder to do that. But again, like, I think a lot of the goal here is to just drag out when we see each character for the first time, right? Because as soon as these are introduced, the clues are being decoded, people are listening to the voices and starting to figure out who, who it is. And so I think Fox is honestly just trying to spread out that process as much as possible to have, you know, group A go for a little bit and B go for a little bit and then sustain momentum by like introducing new groups later in the show. But I just think it makes it way harder to follow. That is true, though. I do agree with your earlier, what you said, in the sense of I do feel like I do know the characters a lot more than I did versus, like, season one. So, I mean, there's pros and cons to it. You guys, let us know in the comments. How are you feeling about the current format? Are you feeling it? Are you lost? Are you lost in feeling it like I am right now? Um, talk to <laughs> us, you guys, and your comment might be chose for next week. But you know what, Kyle? I think it's time for us to wrap up this week's show. Let everybody know where they can find you on social. Yeah, it's Kmont Pleasure on Instagram and Twitter. And then you can find me at double underscore M-E-L-B-A-E -E on Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. But make sure, more importantly, that you're following Talent Recap on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. You're on it right now at Talent Recap on all platforms. You guys click subscribe. And I think it's time for us to say, and that's our Talent Recap. Hey, what are you doing tonight? Well, I think you should hit that subscribe button down below and then we can talk.